Isaiah chapter 26 and Ezekiel the 26th book of the Bible we got a great passage here of prophecy now there was prophecy on the first coming of Jesus Christ amen 48 prophets I'm told and it was completely absolutely fulfilled Realize there's much more prophecies, more than 48. On There's a few on the church age, which we're in now. There is prophecy about the tribulation period. There's prophecy of the second coming of Jesus Christ at the end of the seven years. There's prophecy of the last three and a half years of the tribulation period called the Great Tribulation. There's prophecy of the millennium. The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. There is prophecy about the great white throne judgment. Before that, the earth and the heavens are burnt up and new Jerusalem, new heavens and new earth. There is tons of prophecy yet to be fulfilled all about Jesus and a nation of people called Israel. Now, you must know that God is never finished with Israel. He may be angry with them, and he'll be angry with them in Jacob's trouble. But he's not finished with them. And I kindly ask you, if you think that Israel is all done, God is finished with them, kindly unfriend me and don't have anything to do with me. I'm not saying anybody has, but I'm saying, because God said, I will bless them that bless you, Israel. I will curse them that curse you to Israel. And we're going to look at prophecy still, as we've already still seen. You realize, going all the way back to Genesis 3.15, there's been prophecy. It says, in that day, uh-oh. Pay attention to those three words in that day. Shall this song be sung in the land of Judah? So Isaiah 26 is a song. We got the song of Moses. We got the song of Deborah. We have a strong city. They ain't got a strong city today. Matter of fact, they're, beaten, being, they're being beaten down with COVID-19 as anybody else is. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. You realize in the millennium, the peaceful reign of Jesus Christ, there's still going to be walls in the cities. This is... This is this is the land of Judah, this is Bethel, this is Bathsheba, this is Jerusalem. There is a wall in heaven in New Jerusalem. Think about that. Now they say fences, all that, this is my land, that's your land. But what are you going to do in New Jerusalem where there's a wall and it's only going to be God's land? Open ye the gates. And the gates of New Jerusalem are always open. There are gates of a pearl. One pearl for 12 gates. Well, did I say that right? There's 12 pearls and one pearl for each of the 12 gates. Hope I said that correctly. You know, they talk about the pearly gates. And Peter, Peter going to be a standing at the pearly gates. Which one? <laughs> There's 12 of them. Got to get off tradition and fairy tale stories. I, this is not about New Jerusalem, but I'm looking to the Christian. I'm spiritualizing it for the Christian, too. This is Jerusalem in the millennium. That the righteous nation... Israel, which keepeth the truth, may enter. <laughs> They're not keeping the truth today. 
that will keep him in perfect peace. Peace cometh through Jesus. Woe unto them say, peace, peace, and there is no peace. Whose mind is stayed upon thee. Because thou trustest in thee, God. Do you want peace? You want a steady mind? Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust, look at trust, trust. Ye in the Lord forever. For the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. There it is. It doesn't say Lord Allah. It doesn't say Lord Pope. It don't say Lord Mary. It don't say Lord Buddha. Jehovah. One God above all gods. Who's your God, Stalley? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, we've got the God of Abraham and Isaac. Wrong God. Wrong God. Well, we got a God that came to North America after, you know, he, he, he came out of the tomb. Wrong God. We have a God that's not God. He was a good man, and, and he, you know, he was sent by God, and, and he did wonderful, great works, but he's not God. Then he's not God. And you got the wrong God. Keepers of truth. God, Jesus Christ, did not come to North America. You are not the 144,000 virgin males of the tribe of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're not in the tribulation period. And that you have over a billion people in your assembly now, and you're the 144,000? What about the 144,001? Nowhere in this day and age does God say, go, you know, if somebody won't convert to Christianity, slice off their, their neck. God don't say that today. God shed his blood, Acts 20, 28. He does not ever tell any Christians to shed blood. And that goes for Papa Church with Mama Mary going out slaying and killing people in the name of the Bible and the name, name of, of their Christianity true to the Bible. They're liars. For he bringeth, for God bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, pride, proud. You know what God's going to do to America? He's going to bring her down. He ain't going to exalt her. She's pride. I'm proud to be American, made an American. And then you look at some of the songs. I forget one of the songs they, they, they sung all the time. All the, we're proud to be American. And you get the men in the pulpits throughout this country. I'm just proud of this church. I am proud. Nothing more than a preacher getting up saying I'm proud. I'm proud of my children. That's a sin. I don't know if they do it in England. I don't know if they do it in other countries. But I know they do it in America. God will bring down your pride. Never will he exalt proud and prideness. He lays it low. <laughs> He's not going to bring it down. He's going to bring it low. He lay it low. Just in case you didn't get it the first time, he's going to do it twice. Even to the ground. Proverbs speaks about pride in a fall. And a halt is destruction. He brings it even to the dust. <laughs> Serpents eat the dust. Serpents, the devil. 
Housewives go around dust the houses. The foot shall tread it down. The foot, not God's foot. After he's brought the lofty high city down, people are going to just walk over. You know what they're doing in Babylon today? Though the city's not, they walk right over it. Even the feet of the poor. Imagine that. Here's a poor man walking on what used to be proud and great and greatness. And the steps of the needy. Such great buildings, such proud buildings. No one else is allowed but us. And they're coming time to fall and the way of the just is uprightness. <clears throat> you want to be just? You got to be upright. Are you proclaiming to be just and you're not upright? You're a liar. Thou, God, most upright. <laughs> okay, if you're just living upright, the most upright is God. So you're following God's example. Thus way the path of the just. All right, you proclaim to be just, you live upright. There's the most upright. And God is judging those that are just. There are people who proclaim to be just in pride. And they're higher than God. And then they're judging everything and everyone, including God. You say, oh, no, they won't. Why does God kill the little children? Why does God allow all this? Now, why does God allow all this to happen? Like, God has to give you an answer. What is it that you think that God has to answer your question? That's pride. It's not just. Now, there are times... I'm trying to live. I'll ask God. Events in my life say, God, okay, not that I'm demanding an answer from you, but I want to do right and I want to know what the circumstances is so I can do right. And I don't want to go the false way. And I, I, some of my prayers lately have been to the Fox's Book of Mars. Lord God, there's a path in front of me in the book of Fox and Mar Fox's Book of Mark. To the left, there's destruction and de death. To the right, there's a wilderness that doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. And in front of me is the straight upward way that's hard to walk. Where do I go? Now, that's perfect and proper. Yea, in the way of thy God's judgments. And God has a whole book of judgments. One of the judgments for us today is that we judge our sins. Not theirs. Ours. O oh Lord, have we waited for thee? And that's Israel. Going back, that's Israel. For the Christians, the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize the Jews are waiting for the same blessed hope of the Christians? And those that have put their faith and trust in the Messiah during this age and period are going to see the Messiah sooner than the Jewish people. And in the church, there are Jewish people that put their faith and trust in Jesus. Individual Jews can be saved. Neither Jew or Greek or Greek and Jew. I forget how Paul says it in Romans 10. But those that put their faith in Jesus Christ are saved. We're going to see the Messiah. We're going to see Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, before the nation of Israel. Then approximately seven years, because we don't know how long after the rapture, the, the, the tribulation began, but the seven years, then they're going to see the very same Jesus that we waited to see, 
And then when, when they do see Jesus, they're going to see us behind Jesus. Joel chapter 2. Is that not a kick in the pants? Let's say, let's say right now tonight the rapture happened. And there are Jewish people who go up, they're saved. And they leave their Jewish family and friends behind. Imagine some of those Jewish family and friends and co-workers make it through the seven years. And they go off into that, that wilderness, that place prepared by God, Revelation 12. And the second advent comes, and there's that Jesus, the same Jesus that their friend or, or relative or co-worker left at the rapture. Here comes that same blessed hope, Jesus. And lo and mighty, and look behind Jesus, there's their family member, there's their friend or co-worker right behind Jesus. It's the same Jesus that the nation of Israel rejected. The desire of our soul is thy name. That name is Jesus and Jehovah and to the remembrance of thee. So what did Jesus say? What did Paul say about the church? You do the Lord's Supper in remembrance. With my soul, I have desired thee in the night. The time of rest. The time. All right, put all problems away, put the head on the pillow, and go to sleep and dream. Yea, with my spirit, soul and spirit, within me will I seek thee early. Early before the rapture. So you can go up in the rapture. You better settle in your mind in the tribulation period. At what point? I'm going to serve Jehovah. And I'm going to serve Jehovah right. Because that Antichrist is going to say. At the three and a half year period. Round end. <coughs> received a mark. <coughs> For when thy judgments are in the earth. Bowls. Seals, woes, and trumpets. Why don't Christians like to read the Old Testament? But they'll be happy to go to the movie theater. And they, they are so aroused today. We got this Christian movies. They had one several years ago about uh, Noah. And I never went to go see it. And everybody I know, my friends who love the Lord... Some of them seen it, some of them didn't. They, they said it had nothing to do with the Bible. Oh! Uh -huh. uh -huh. I could have told you that with the robe. You know, Jesus wore that purple robe only for a few minutes to be battered by the Roman soldiers. Well, you know, um, I forgot his name, but I don't care. The Passion of Christ. You mean the Passion of Christ where every day that they filmed that movie, they had the mass done by a Catholic priest? That Mel Gibson was a Roman Catholic priest? And that the whole entire story focused not on Jesus, but on Mary? And even Catholics will tell you that. It's not a movie about the Bible. And they got other movies now. And uh, They made Pilgrim's Progress. Are you going to see the Pilgrim's Progress movie? Absolutely, correctly not. Because I know it's not about the book. You know what I learned? The movies are not like the books. Call me a sinner. I am. But I used to watch The Wizard of Oz. My mom had to watch it every year. So I listen to books on tape and I put them in my ears. I kind of read, but I heard the book of The Wizard of Oz. I wanted to see how different it was from the movie. And brother, it was totally, completely, as far as, as 
the Atlantic Ocean is from the Pacific Ocean. That had nothing to do with the movie. Now call me a sinner for listening to the Wizard of Oz, but I learned a lesson. And I learned that lesson today with Christian movies. They're nothing like the book. Don't even get involved with them. Don't even waste your money about them. And when you go, the popcorn's going to be expensive. I got Christians all, oh, I got this CD, I got this movie. Keep it. I got the Bible. And I, I, I got a thing too. Every time now they're going to ask me, I got this movie. I'm going to say, when was the last time you read your Bible? It's a good question. When they say, I got this Christian, ask him, when was the last time you read your King James Bible? The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness when Jesus Christ comes. Not with the Antichrist. Let favor be showed to the wicked. But look at that verse. <laughs> you know what we've been reading through Psalms and reading, man, Lord, get the wicked. Lord, curse the wicked. And there's that wicked. You know what the favor of the wicked in any Christ is? God shows him favor? Absolutely correctly so. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> Hello, Pastor. You got this guy says that the, the Antichrist got favor. Ready? Here it is. God gives him seven year reign. God allows him to go seven years. Come on, didn't Jesus say before he went to the cross, I could call down legions of angels and didn't? Could not God, Jesus Christ, when he's standing before the Sanhedrin, they got his face covered and a guy punches him right in the face? And he, okay, who did that? What happened? Man, he punched Jesus and Jacob became a power of ashes. Whoa. Did that not happen to Nehu and, and Abihu when they offered the strange incense? Is that not what happened to, to both uh, Judah's sons when they when God said, listen, he just did wicked. You're dead. Is that not what happened to, to, to the husband and wife? I don't know their name, but, you know, Peter, yeah, we gave so much. Dead. Could not Jesus Christ say, okay, the one that's laying on the ground is a bunch of ashes. That's the one that I'm punched sorry, me in the face. I'm sorry, but I can't help with that yet. Okay, I must mute that thing. Okay? Could not, could not God any time say, okay, Satan, I'm done with it. Could any time while Jesus is on the cross, God say, wait a minute, turn the lights on, angels start your singing, call him home. And think about this expression with God at any moment. You know, this is the long-suffering God. Jesus is dying and suffering on the cross. God, all right, to hell with him. Bring him home. It's our favor that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. So, let favor be shown on the, on the wicked. Yet will he not, he, 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 singular, not they. It's not a T-H-E-Y, it's a he. I've been telling you that wicked is the Antichrist. Will not learn, not learn righteousness. Will the Antichrist ever learn to get right? Did Judas ever learn to get right? Him and 11 men spent their entire life with, with Jesus. Judas had, had the miracles and had the signs of the of disciples. In the land, that's the same land of 26 1, upright, uprightness will he, one person, the wicked again, deal unjustly seven years Jacob's trouble 
and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. He's going to curse God. I think Thessalonians says. He's going to ridicule God. He's going to tort God. He's going to unjustify God. He's going to sass God. He's going to mock God. As the same people that mock you when you do your public ministry. Lord, <laughs> Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. But they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Envy is a sin. Yea, the fire of thy enemies shall devour them. That's the second advent. Jesus Christ has got his hand up. He's got the scepter in his hand. There's fire coming out of his eyes. A sword coming out of his mouth. I read today in Joel, was it Amos? It says, before him, it, it'll be fire. Flamethrowers. And then be him, behind him, it's like the Garden of Eden. <laughs> I was wondering how far behind Jesus is the Garden of Eden. When because the church is following Jesus in, in in the at the second advent. And there's just a fire and flames and just going out before Jesus. <clears throat> and the Bible says behind him is Eden. Are we gonna tread Eden? Is that how quick that fire turns into the paradise? Or will we trample the war-torn ground and behind us it turns to eat them? Because Joel chapter 2 for the Christian describes, man, we'll be jumping over walls and in and out of windows not breaking ranks. Because we don't read the Old Testament, so... Lord... <laughs> Thou will ordain peace for us. That's the millennium. There it is. I'm an ordained minister. I'm not. I'm an ordained minister. There's an ordaining of peace coming. That the United Nations could never get. The Pope could never wish to get the kind of peace. For thou, God, has wrought all our work in us, Israel. And at the second advent and the church. <laughs> o Lord our God. And think of that hymn. Other lords. Lord of lords. <laughs> Other lords. Egypt, Syria, Babylon, Rome, Germany, America, etc., etc., etc. Beside thee have dominion over us. The, whole, the Jews have been under, you know, they said to Jesus, his blood be upon us and our children. And there's another point they said uh, to uh, Jesus, we be, uh, I forget what it is. We be not in bondage or something like, something like that. You were under the bondage of Rome. I mean, actually, under the penalty of law, Jesus was a was disobeyed the law by his teaching. If a man brings in the, but he was God. Paul was going after and killing Jesus, be, the Christian, because the law said you're supposed to do it. But they didn't understand that Jesus is God. They were Jehovah Witnesses before Jehovah Witnesses were Jehovah Witnesses. Okay. But the nation of Israel has been in bondage under King Saul, the Syrians, the Babylonians, the Moabites, the Ammonites, all through the book of Judges. They were under another authority because God sent another authority because they kept sinning. So listen to me, listen to me. Oh, they look forward to Calvary. They were so stupid enough to say, well, we're under bondage to no man. 
All right. Get yourself a map of the Middle East that includes Turkey, includes Egypt, and includes the area of the Middle East, okay? Put it up on the wall. Close your eyes. Point your finger on somewhere on that map. And do it 30 or 40 different times. And wherever your finger points, Israel was in bondage. All through the book of Judges. They were in bondage to King Saul, a wicked man. They were in bondage under the, the Philistine while King Saul was King Saul. They came in bondage under Jezebel. Assyria came and took, took Israel away. Babylon came and took Israel, Judah away. They're in bondage today to the United Nuts. Well, you know, for these people, give, give, give up some land. <laughs> okay. I dare for them to call up the law and say, put your hands up so we can win. Hold his, that ain't going to happen. Not yet. He that is faithful like the Moses, wait till he lifts his hand up. No one's going to help hold his hand up. And when he holds his hand up like Moses, then the battle is going to be won. And that's Jesus Christ. But by thee, God only, we will make mention of thy name. That name is going to be Jesus in the shock and horror of Jehovah Witnesses and the Catholic Church and Islam. Imagine Islam hating the Jews, they do, and then proclaiming Michael the archangel, who is the archangel and prince over the nation of Israel. Read the book of Daniel. They are dead. That's sad. They shall not live. They are deceased. Okay, dead means deceased. Got it. They shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them. All the lords have been lords over Israel. And made all their memory to perish. We'll never remember Babylon, and we won't have the Babylonian gods and Babylonian holidays and gods in New Jerusalem. And some Baptist Christians, and they'll be, where's our Christmas? Where's our Easter? What was that loud and loud voice? It'd be styly saying, there is none, it's pagan! I had to throw that in there. Include Valentine's Day, too. I wish he wouldn't do that. Thou has increased the nation. The nation. One nation. Christians are not a nation. We are a building. And I'm not talking about wood and stone. Baptists got that all confused. O oh Lord, thou has increased the nation, just in case you didn't get it the first time. I like when God repeats. You know, the death, the suffering and death according to the scriptures, and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures is mentioned four times in the Gospels. And throughout the range. But the Gospels. You never know, know how many times the birth of Jesus Christ once. Yes, I got to say those things. Thou art glorified. When is he in glorified? When he increases the nation. When Israel again will be like the sand of the sea and the stars of heaven, serving God properly. Man, they're, they're, they're the number of the stars now and they're as far as the sand of the sea today, but they're not serving God properly. 
Thou hast removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. That's when Israel is supposed to go out. Not now. Tribulation period, all the way down to verse 18. Lord in trouble, Jacob's trouble. Have they visited thee, God? They pour out prayer. Oh, they'll be in prayer. When thy chastening, chastening is Jacob's trouble, God beat in the butt behind Israel in the tribulation period for being bad children was upon them, the Jews. Now here's that illustration I keep telling you about. Like a woman with child, travail, and draweth near time to her delivery, is in pain, that travail. I tell you, that travail, the Bible mentions about, is, is the likens of the tribulation period. And crieth out in her pangs, the travail. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. Pain and anguish. Tribulation. Great tribulation. We have been with child. We have been in pain. Travail. We have as it brought forth wind. Nothing came out of it. There's a woman over there. She gives birth to a son in chapter 12 of Revelation. And I mentioned one time that that woman was Israel. I got a little chuckle. Why is this woman in pain? Why is this woman in childbirth? Why does it match Revelation 12? Quinky dinky? We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. <laughs> Death. Guillotine. The dragon wants to eat your fruit. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. <laughs> the world is still there. The world is against Israel and they're not falling. They're not being cursed because they're cursing Israel yet. That comes at the end of the seven years. But it will come. My advice to you, if you're watching this video in the tribulation period, you're a leader of a nation, and you're going to curse Israel, don't do it. The die, die Israel. Israel, die dead men. Now this ought to look familiar if you read the Old Testament. Ezekiel, thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Verse 14, the wicked don't rise. Verse 19, there's a resurrection. The valley of dry bones, I believe is Ezekiel 37. Awake and sing, chapter 26, verse 1. Ye that dwell in the dust. Uh, we read somewhere about dust. I don't see it. I already made a comment about that. And thy dew is as the dew of herbs. Natural. Fresh. And the earth shall cast out the dead. Well, look at that leap. We are in the millennium. And then we go all the way to where the earth and the heavens are dissolved. And you're going to the great white throne judgment. Death in hell, Revelation 20, shall give up the dead that's in them. Look at that. Man, if they saw Calvary, they saw the great white throne judgment too. Come, back to the tribulation period. Come, my people, Israel. Enter thou into thy chambers, thy rooms. Shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Seven years is a little moment. That's a long time. 
until the indignation be over until the, the time of Jacob's trouble is over hi and then they're going to have to leave the house and Jesus said he that's on the house stop don't go in and get your stuff you're not it's in the room don't go back and get your stuff you are out in the field don't look back like Lot's wife get going to a place prepared for Israel, the woman, Revelation chapter 12. I know, I love saying stuff like that. For behold, second advent, the Lord cometh. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jesus. Out of his place. Where is his place? Heaven. Revelation 19. Stay there for a minute. Let me go look. Let's see how Revelation 19 words it. Stay there. You can look it up later. I want you to look it up later, but not now. Revelation 19. Uh, how's it word? Why is my Bible keep? Revelation 19:11. Look it up later. I saw heaven open. I saw Revelation 19. Oh, Jesus. I behold the Lord cometh out of his place. Scripture with scripture. Why don't I read the Old Testament? That, the Lord just showed me that right then and there. Right then and there. To punish the inhabitants of the earth. For the iniquity. What's the iniquity? Cursing Jacob. Cursing Israel. I will scatter them from, as sheep on the right and goats on the left. What's the crime of the judge Jesus Christ of the tribulation period? At the second advent. Goat and sheep. Sheep help my people. And they don't even know it. Goats, you curse my people. What's the judgment of the tribulation period? The Jewish people for rejecting Jesus Christ and killing Jesus Christ and beating Jesus Christ. Not in that order. And the Christians. Throughout the books of that. You know, listen, you know the, the biggest conflict and the biggest thing? Paul tells us that the Jews are our enemy of the gospel. And many of the attacks upon Bible-believing Christians in the preaching and the teaching and the evangelism, the evangelistic works, many of the people that are trying to halt it are the Jewish people and Catholics and religions. Paul has already told us the Jews are our enemies, but you better pray for that Jew. You better... Because that cursing of the Jew and that blessing of the Jew goes for Christians too. The earth also shall disclose her blood. Everyone that has been killed by murder, that the murderer has not been put to death. Cain, yes, your, blood, your brother's blood cries out. And the law says... By a man's blood is shed, by that man the blood shall be shed, or there is no cleansing of the land. America has in her foundations people that are living in the correctional institute. They're on death row. And they're never going to die by capital punishment because they killed people. We're not a Christian nation because Romans 13 says we're to, we're to put the power authority to execute judgment. One day at this point, all the blood that has been spilled on American soil and all soils, if the death of the murderer does not happen, that blood is going to cry out and spill out to God. Was it an unjust war? The blood will cry out. And Cain's brother, Abel's blood, cried out, but Cain wasn't guilty. What? Cain didn't know about murder. Cain had no...
Now we wonder about Lamech. I killed, saved the man in my wounded and heard him. Did he murder? Was he bragging about it? That blood would be, that blood, whoever, if it did, would be crying out. And we'll know the Bible true. And shall no more cover her slain. That would be the America, that would be the Catholic Church, and that would be Islam, that would be anybody who has murdered anybody 